Um, all right, so let's check out some weird history. If you guys don't know any of these guys, I will be putting links in the description box below if they're not already there. Uh, yep, Coolio, we do have we have a Discord server. Join links in the description box below. We'd love to see you over there. Uh, I don't advertise it much because I don't want it to get too big because I like small communities and stuff like that, but we're still glad to have you. Uh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get started with this, and I will hop back in uh, and interact with you guys as we go. Snow White skin was considered fun the chic, sexy Chime look in. of the Elizabethan English elite. Queen Elizabeth I's signature ghostly makeup typified the 16th century ideal for women, her porcelain skin representing nobility and earthly perfection. But to achieve that perfection, Elizabeth covered her face with makeup composed largely of lead. She also <laughs> rubbed mercury on her lips and probably used a mercury-based makeup remover that ate away at her flesh. To this is not surprising at all. Honestly, lead was in everything not even that long ago. Uh, so the fact that there's lead in her makeup is not surprising at all. The mercury thing, given the time, it's it's not surprising. I don't know when people started getting scared of mercury. Uh, I don't know if that's a more recent thing or not. Uh, lead is still kind of recent. We still have lead paint in so many houses here. Uh, that might be a problem with American infrastructure, though. I don't know what that's like other places. Today, we're talking about Elizabeth I, the makeup that may have led to her death. But before we get started, just a reminder to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know what historical figure you would like us to cover. Now let's get moving. The Queen beckons us. Before they get started, one thing I do want to really praise about Weird History, they cover some narrow topics, some obscure things that you're not going to see a lot of other... Uh, history channels talk about a lot of them go for like the more popular stories let's talk about this war that has been talked about to death and maybe you'll bring something unique to the conversation but what they do is so unique seemingly uh i've only watched like a handful of them only one of them on video uh but like i love the narrowness of their topics yes birdmon what's it wasn't up wasn't until 1973 that they banned Mer it wasn't until 1973 that they banned mercury and makeup, is what Bird Mom is telling us. I needed to know. So this is not uh, something she would be tripping about all that much. I guess it, it's probably like how much, how often she wore the makeup. She was probably like constantly in the makeup. Maybe if you wore it less, you wouldn't have suffered as much. But like being a royal, like. That must be, you must be quite vulnerable. Yes. During the Virgin Queen's era, the highest standard for female beauty was smooth, blindingly white skin. To achieve this look, Elizabeth wore Venetian Ceruse, a cosmetic made from white lead and vinegar. She powdered her face and neck with the substance, transforming her poxy skin, more on that later, into an eerie porcelain canvas that probably smelled like sour wine. That's certainly one way to maintain your virginity. Yeah, uh, Austin, I, I noticed that as well. I thought it was just one guy who did the weird history stuff, but their output seems to be really big, so I'm sure it's like a bunch of people, but I, I've not heard this voice yet. In the handful of videos that I have checked out, it has been uh, the same dude. Uh, this is, I believe this is also their most popular video. It's got like 14 million views, which is insane. I didn't pick it for that reason. I picked it because it was one of the first things that came up, but it's one of the first things that came up probably because it's so popular. Thanks to 400 years of science, we now know that applying lead to the face on a daily basis causes very serious and often irreversible problems like hair loss and skin deterioration and death by lead poisoning, which in the 16th century was pretty damn final. It may well have been for mm. Queen Elizabeth, but lead wasn't the only poison in her pigments. Let's look at the other suspect. Snow White's mom wished for more than a tiny ghost baby. She also wanted her to have lips as red as blood on winter roses. Made from cinnabar, a toxic mineral containing mercury, the RL Queen's lip stain Ouch. gave her the signature red mouth that leaps out at you in all those creepy paintings. So, we have two horrific poisons working in tandem through skin absorption over long periods of time. On the surface, the lead face slowly corroded the Queen's skin. 
In response, Elizabeth wore thicker and thicker layers of makeup, reportedly layering makeup an inch thick toward the end of her life. Symptoms That's of mercury adding the poisoning prop to include the problem. memory loss, irritability, and depression, conditions Elizabeth reportedly experienced towards the end of her life. Now we're getting warmer. In the Elizabethan era, nobles didn't clean off their makeup nightly. Heck, most modern women have been guilty of that at least a couple times. After her maids carefully applied lead and mercury makeup to the royal face, Elizabeth herself wore it for at least a week. Forget about pore blockage. The lead soaked into her skin, causing it to turn gray and wrinkled. When Elizabeth finally had her makeup removed, historians suggest she might have used a gross concoction containing eggshells, alum, <laughs> and, you guessed it, more mercury. Some more claimed mercury. the mercury makeup remover left their skin soft, but that was only because it was literally skinning them alive one layer at a time. Oh my god. As a teen, Queen Elizabeth didn't wear quite so much lead face. What's that called? Is that like, that's called exfoliating, right? When you just get, when you... Try to take off layers of skin. That's that's a very brutal form of exfoliating. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's a thing. It just should not be done that way. It's not simply because she was a child, but because she hadn't caught small. What's up? Just adding abrasions, skin, mercury soaks in more. Oh my god. Yeah, it's that's really bad. <laughs> Pox yet. On October 10th, 1562, she was struck with a high fever and displayed all the hallmarks of the pox. Courtiers worried and worried that Elizabeth would die within the week, but the young royal survived. Unfortunately, the disease left her with permanent scars in her terrible twenties, when life is either a bed of roses or a garbage fire. And scars don't stack the odds against the latter. Smallpox scars were a common problem at the time, hence the willingness of women to wear vinegary lead face. Elizabeth's close friend Mary Sidney got stuck with them too. As Henry Sidney, Mary's husband, wrote, the scars to a resolute discomfort ever since have done and do remain on her face. Trying to survive in an atmosphere of constant bitchiness, Elizabeth did everything possible to cover up such blemishes and keep that virginity on lockdown. Anything to avoid a husband who updates people on his wife's pockmarks. There haven't been many female rulers in English history. Let's face it, in any history. A fact yeah. with which Elizabeth was all too familiar. She knew all eyes were on her and that any scarring on her face would mark her not as a survivor, but a pariah in those eyes. In 1586... I've been guilty, though, of, like, uh, like, not fully appreciating how much, uh, women in royal families do participate i i always for so much of my life i thought like they were just they didn't really do much at all but they are still incredibly active figures and i i, I was i was very guilty of not giving them the respect they deserved there uh yeah Six, a 50s-ish Elizabeth commented on the weight of these expectations hard. while addressing Parliament. We princes, I tell you, are set on stages in the sight and view of all the world duly observed. The eyes of many behold our actions. A spot is soon spied in our garments, a blemish noted quickly in our doings. Mm. In a ballsy act of pre-Instagram filtering, Elizabeth flat out forbade unflattering portraits of herself. Painters were given an opportunity the to boss. get really, really creative. They had to make her look young and supple and white, even as she entered her autumn years, which in this case is a little too good at describing what happens to human skin after decades of lead makeup. He so we probably don't have a good depiction of her. We probably don't really like have any way of knowing what she actually looked like, if that's the case, and unless uh, some bad... Like, if a bad painting was made, if, like, an ugly painting was made, it was probably destroyed, I would imagine. Here's the trick. The artist had to make the portrait recognizable as Queen Elizabeth without showing any of the scarred, sagging, and perhaps even molting skin beneath that inch-thick mask of white. Enter the famous Darnelli portrait painted in 1575. It became a godsend of a model for later portrayals as grateful artists reused its depiction of Elizabeth's face in paintings for decades. 
Elizabeth's battle against the ravages of time was fierce and lasted literally all her life. One of her wiser tricks was to wear a wig. Lord knows what lunacy would have been used to dye greys away back then. For a long time, yeah. it was basically like Shatner's toupee. It existed, but was never officially confirmed. Until 1599, <laughs> when the Earl of Essex blew that secret out of the water and immortalized it, expressing his shock upon beholding his elderly queen's mostly bald pate, with only a thin ring of hair hanging about the ears. We can't oh, unsee gosh. that now. Poor Thanks, thing. Earl. In the last months of her life, Elizabeth refused to let doctors examine her. The queen had fallen into a deep melancholy, according to a member of her court. Still, Elizabeth refused to rest. She believed that if she lay down, she would never get up. So Elizabeth stood for 15 hours straight, with her ladies spreading pillows around the queen for when she inevitably collapsed. On March 24, 1603, Elizabeth passed away. Possible causes of death include cancer or pneumonia, but Elizabeth's use of lead and mercury-based makeup for decades in increasingly liberal doses certainly at least contributed to her declining health. After a lifetime of lead and mercury poisoning, Elizabeth's body was toxic. Elizabeth Southwell, one of the Queen's ladies-in-waiting, claimed that Elizabeth's body burst in her coffin at her wake due to the abundance of noxious vapors. Although oh, Southwell's really? account has often been dismissed as Jesuit propaganda of all things, exploding coffins aren't unheard of, even today. The phenomenon is called exploding casket syndrome, and it's what happens when a corpse is sealed a bit too well. The coffin acts as a pressure cooker for all the gases and fluids produced by a decomposing body until, well, there's a reason this got chalked up to bad religion. Here's another horrible thing. While Elizabeth certainly suffered the effects of lead and mercury poisoning, she may have that's actually probably, died. Like that might be a little closer, right? Like that that's probably like cleaned up a little bit, but you see lines in her face still. You, you, you can see the age on her. I don't know if this is, I don't know the origin of this particular painting, but, uh, or, but like that, that's a like that's like a believable aging woman like aging quite gracefully which makes me think oh yeah definitely not definitely not accurate from blood poisoning just a week before she passed in 1603 elizabeth's doctors recommended a risky procedure for 45 years since the day she was crowned elizabeth wore a coronation ring the ring began cutting into elizabeth's well-poisoned skin and presumably kept on cutting Doctors warned her that the ring had to be surgically removed, and a week later, she died. And then oh, exploded, no. depending on who you ask. Evidence of people using lead for makeup dates back to at least the 5th century BCE. During the time of the Roman Empire, women powdered their faces with lead. By the 16th century, the concoction was known as Venetian Cerus, or the Spirits of Saturn, Queen Elizabeth's favorite cosmetic. I personally prefer MAC. Unfortunately for her and every other Cerus fan in history, it wasn't classified as a poison until 1634, less than 40 years after her death, which it had at least one hand in, if not both. People knew it caused hair loss and skin damage, but it took a long time for us to figure out that we were literally killing ourselves in the name of beauty. In many ways, we still are. Like it or not, pain and death for beauty is a very old and well-entrenched tradition, and it's oh, yeah. not done with us. So, what do you think about Queen Elizabeth's makeup tutorial? Let us know in Why Elizabeth was a badass queen, that one could be fun. History's 10 most ruthless uh, and brutal rulers, that could be fun. Like, there's so many fun ones here. These are, uh, like, bigger, more popular topics, certainly. But they have some really weird, narrow ones. They've, they put out one recently that I want to check out about uh paul revere's outhouse like and if that's not a narrow subject i don't know what is